Hi everybody, thanks for your interest. This is my presentation for what I hope is a game-changing VR locomotion system. The solution, it's incredibly immersive. To be sure, it's not all entirely brand new, but it just hasn't been done like this before. The key component is a novel approach to the walking in place method of locomotion. You can walk, jog, run, and even sprint with it. And I know that this isn't necessarily what everyone wants as the VR locomotion solution. I get that. But once you try, it's really difficult to go back. I call this the Freedom Locomotion System. And I think it's as close to solving the issue of immersive VR locomotion as we can get within the current practical limitations of VR. To be sure, there's a lot more to the system than just on-the-spot movement. The Freedom Locomotion System is actually a number of subsystems that have been tightly wrapped up into a cohesive whole. The first one I've already shown, the on-the-spot solution that I call Chaos, which is short for Controller Assisted on the Spot. And the reason I call it that is simple. You need to move around on the spot in order to get movement happening. It uses a combination of the controller heading and the touchpad to determine the direction of movement. Now, this isn't the first in-place movement system for VR, but the main points of difference between this and all the rest that have come before it is that head motion is very accurately translated into virtual motion. Also, setting the direction is easy, it's intuitive and immersive. And it still leaves your hands, both hands, free to grab and use things during movement. It's also a very ergonomic way of getting around in VR. I mean, all you really have to do is hold your hands by your side, naturally, and you'll simply move in the direction that you expect to. You're free to look around while still moving as you please while moving on the spot. And if you need to go backwards or strafe, you can do that too, without holding your arms awkwardly, although you can if you want to. Additionally, Chaos accounts for your hand motion and factors it into the movement speed. If you're running, you'll run faster when you're swinging your arms. With this, you can move easily and freely around a wide variety of scenarios, including flat planes, steps, open expanses, rough terrain, and tight spaces. This is also the easiest movement system in which to express a full range of movement. If you want to sneak, you can sneak. If you want to walk, you can walk. If you want to sprint like the wind, you can do that too. You're not going to find yourself in a scenario where you've shifted your thumb slightly on the touchpad and you accidentally go from a slow walk to a fast sprint. But the simple truth of the matter is that chaos is not going to be for everybody. And although it's an immersive and great way to get around in VR, not everyone will be capable of walking jogging, or running on the spot to get around. For example, an on-the-spot solution would be problematic for people with aching knees or feet, and difficult to use for a person in a wheelchair or just sitting down. Even I'm not always in the mood to use chaos, especially after a long day of development where I've been standing and jogging in place for a few hours. So that's why I came up with a complementary movement system called Dash Step. The solution is much more like your traditional movement schemes, where you're not moving around on the spot to get around, but simply using the touchpad or analog stick to move you around. Unlike the smooth locomotion systems that move you around continuously, however, Dash Step accounts for the problem of vection and motion sickness in VR by using well-established locomotion mechanisms to circumvent those issues. Essentially, you set the direction of movement with Dash Step the same way as in Chaos. You point with the controller, and you adjust with the touchpad. But instead of walking on the spot, you simply press the touchpad to take a step forwards. The dash step is short and quick. This works remarkably well and doesn't trigger motion sickness in the vast majority of users. Each time you press the touchpad, you take another step forwards. Press it really quickly in succession, and it's like you're sprinting. Alternatively, you can simply click and hold the touchpad down to move forward at a steady pace. Additionally, you can adjust the step length with your thumb on the touchpad as well as the height 
and angle of the controller from bending your elbow. As a result, dash step is a great compromise between the immersiveness of smooth motion and the inclusiveness of teleportation. If you're hyper susceptible to motion sickness and nothing I've done can get you over the hump, I've still got you covered. Blink step is essentially the same thing as dash step, except there is no visual motion between each step. You simply blink to the new position of the next step, and because it doesn't do the blackout frame, which wipes out your immediate visual memory with each step you take, it's more immersive than blink teleportation. So, in a sense, dash step and blink step are simply forms of teleportation. They're just incorporated into the freedom locomotion system in a way that integrates a more sensible and intuitive control scheme for continuous and immersive movement. I mean, one of the things that teleportation does to take you out of the moment is to make you point to the location you want to move to, which while easy to learn and use, is really nothing like what we're used to doing when we're actually moving around in real life. Also, with dash step and blink step, because you're moving in reasonably sized, regular intervals in a rhythmic pace, it retains a sense of scale of the virtual environment, something that you end up losing when you point and teleport everywhere. As a result of all this, with dash step and blink step, we have locomotion solutions that provide the best of smooth motion with the best of teleportation, which is the ability to look around freely without making a bunch of people motion sick in the process. In addition to the three interchangeable movement methods that help serve as the foundation of the freedom locomotion system, there are three always-on subsystems that helps to assist in making the system more robust, intuitive, and a more immersive way of getting around, helping to make it really deserving of that freedom moniker. The first of these subsystems is the grab turning system. This solution allows you to turn around freely in virtual space without having to physically turn and do so while using a few tricks to help minimize the amount of vection you experience. This allows you to move in all directions in the virtual environment, which is extremely useful for front-facing VR systems, such as PlayStation VR or the Oculus Rift with two front-facing cameras. You can even turn while moving by initiating grab turning from the opposing hand to the one you're moving with. As an added bonus, it can also be used to realign the virtual space with the physical space, making those straight lines match up with each other. The second subsystem is called the anti-boundary violation system, and essentially it allows for the virtual environment to react appropriately to the user's movement in room scale, disallowing them from walking through virtual walls or walking in air off a virtual ledge, making this an important subsystem for reinforcing the reality of virtual reality. Basically, what happens in the anti-boundary violation system is that when you try to walk into a virtual wall, it will black out your screen. In other systems that do this, they just leave it at that. But this isn't necessarily the best solution, because there's a real chance that you'll end up disorientating the user as they try to find their way back to the valid virtual space. But in Freedom Locomotion's anti-boundary violation system, the custom room scale boundaries show up, allowing you to understand where the boundaries of the physical room spaces, as well as what the virtual objects are within the room space. Additionally, the anti-boundary violation system will stop you from walking through tables and other waist-high objects in room scale. If you try, you'll get a warning in the form of orange room scale boundaries popping up. As you push further into the virtual object, the view will darken and you'll eventually be kicked back to the point that you were at before you started clipping into the object. It even accounts for waist bend. So the more you bend at the waist, the further you'll be able to reach over the table's edge. This way, you have some flexibility while moving around virtual objects, but you're still incentivized to respect their physicality, or at least their virtual physicality. Finally, the anti-boundary violation system will move you up and down slopes as you walk on them in the room scale. So you're not going to find yourself in a situation where you can park the room scale boundaries over a virtual ledge and then walk around in room scale over virtual air. And with the Freedom Locomotion System, if you do decide to walk over the ledge in room scale, then you're simply going to end up falling virtually. 
What's good about this is that it helps to reinforce a sense of presence and immersion in that virtual space. When you're walking close to a ledge, or walking across a thin beam, you'll have to be careful as to where you place your feet, because you can fall. The third, last, but not least of the subsystems, is the free climbing system. Using the Freedom Locomotion system, you can climb freely. Climbing in VR is a lot of fun, but it's not unique to the Freedom Locomotion system, with games like The Climb or Climby already featuring it. But the point of differentiation is that this is a procedural climbing system, where instead of simply designating 3D surfaces or volumes as grippable, it measures the shape of the surface that you're grabbing at in order to determine whether or not you can actually grab at and climb on that surface. As a result, with this huge robot that I'm climbing right now, all I had to do was set the mesh to a per polygon collision detection method. And it just so happens that I can climb the whole way to the top. In addition, the free climbing system doubles as a method of moving around while prone, where I can grab on the ground and pull forwards instead of upwards, which is sure to be useful for a tactical shooter or stealth gameplay. Alright, so I'm probably being a bit biased when I say this, but I think this is the most immersive and complete VR locomotion system to date. I mean, I've tried a warehouse scale room scale VR system that accurately tracks your position within a thousand plus square meter space. And I have to say that this feels even better than I remember that being. I mean, it felt great, it felt immersive, and at the time it was the best VR experience I had. But the problem was that the game itself had to be built to accommodate the limitations of the physical warehouse space, meaning you couldn't have a gigantic virtual environment to run around it which for indoor spaces wasn't really a problem. But outdoor areas would end way too quickly, and as a result, end up feeling artificial and underwhelming. But with this, the Freedom Locomotion System, once you start walking, jogging, or running on the spot, and you're moving your body and looking around naturally, you become invested in the reality of that virtual space. I mean, it's never going to feel like you're actually running forwards or that you're physically climbing walls and obstacles because it's just not putting those physical forces directly on your body. But at some point, when the virtual world is reacting to you as naturally and completely as it does here and you're not really experiencing motion sickness doing it, it kind of just stops mattering. Once you let yourself be immersed in that virtual world, it kind of feels like you're actually moving around. And it very much feels like you're actually there in that virtual space. So I've packaged the Freedom Locomotion system up into a pretty extensive demo to showcase its capabilities. I wanted the experience to have a little meat in the bones, so to speak, to help encourage you to spend a little bit of time with it to get used to it. In the demo, you have a few landscapes and scenarios to traverse as well as a number of things to find, collect, and play with. Also, quite importantly, there are an extensive set of options so that you can customize the system to your liking. Beyond the ability to select from the three movement types, you have the ability to tweak the finer details of each movement system, as well as the various HUD and resolution options. The demo also includes five levels, including the tutorial, the simple town, the futuristic rooftop, the mountain trail, and the nexus, which serves as a portal level that allows you to return to the spaces you've already visited, as well as serving as a gathering point for the things that you've collected on the way. You can also test out some guns or some swords on these handy physics blocks. This is something that I'll be getting onto Steam soon, so hopefully you can try it out there and have a look for yourself to see whether or not it lives up to the claims that I'm making here. And that's it. That's the Freedom Locomotion System and the Freedom Locomotion VR demo. Check it out. Have a play around with it. And let me know via the comments 
via Reddit, via Twitter, what you think about it. Thanks for your time.